In this next video, we will look at some next steps with Visio. So if you haven't already, I recommend that you start with the beginning video in this series, and I'll leave a link in the description. In this one right here, we will look at using the ruler and guide. So if you are putting shapes onto your drawing, you will want to know how they can be aligned. And if you know the ruler and guides, it will help you do that very task. Cut, copy, and duplicate. There's more than meets the eye when it comes to Visio and duplicating your shapes. And you're gonna be doing a lot of that when you work with the application. And then resizing and reorienting. Again, more to it than meets the eye, more to it than just clicking and dragging on the box that uh, surrounds any shape that you might select. And as a quick reminder, when you like and subscribe to the channel, it helps us continue to make this free content week after week. The purpose of this module is to give you the building blocks you'll use, whether you are starting with a blank sheet of paper or whether you're starting with a Visio template. You're going to use these skills. Almost everyone uses these common skills, no matter what Visio diagram they're using. So the first things we'll start out with is the use of the ruler and the use of the guides to help you position the shapes in your diagram. So here we go. I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit, and you already know the keyboard shortcuts to do some of these things. And I am just gonna grab a couple of shapes and position them and then look at the behavior of the ruler and then add some guides to help me position the shapes exactly where I want them to go. Now, before we even do that, I do want to point out that we are using, at least I'm using, an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper when it becomes printed output. And how do I know that? I know that from the design tab. I can go to the page setup, and much like using a Word document, you can verify that you are creating this drawing on letter or something else, and the orientation is landscape. So if you look at the ruler here, you can see that the paper is 11 inches wide and eight and a half inches long. So with that in mind, I'll just grab a couple of shapes. You can grab whatever shapes you want to, but I'll go over to the Shape Masters in the Basic Shapes stencil, and I'm gonna drag and drop a square onto the page. Now the reason why I dropped it towards the top is so that you could see the ruler and you could see these little tick lines that occur in the ruler that show you the left, right, and center of the shape. So if you want to make a shape that's exactly two inches wide, and in the case of a square, it's also going to be two inches tall, all I have to do is grab the shape resize handles and drag, and then I can keep an eye on the tick lines there and let go when I get a shape that's exactly two inches wide. So that's a way I might use the ruler to help me set the width and the height of the shape and also position the shape exactly one inch from the end of the page as you can see here. So now let's add a second shape to our diagram. Let's add a circle and we'll just drag and drop it onto the diagram and it really doesn't matter where you place it right now because we're going to be using guides here. If you go to the ruler and you wait until the mouse pointer becomes this double-headed arrow, you see the screen tip says drag to add a horizontal guide. So let's go ahead and do that now. So now you can drag this onto the page and the horizontal guide lives and you can see it and it's something that is selectable. So I can click off and I can select it once again. Now I can drag a shape and snap it right to the guide. So now you see the screen tip that says glue to guide, and you also see this, the little green box that helps you glue the shape to the guide. These little green indicators signify that the shape has been glued to this horizontal guide. Same thing with the circle. I can glue it to the guide. I can use the edges and I can use the middle as well. So notice look for the green square that shows up when I start to drag to the middle of the shape. It can help you see it if I just do something like that. And now this shape is glued to the middle of my horizontal guide. So that helps you position shapes and helps you position shapes relative to one another. Now let's say that I want to move these shapes as one but keep them in alignment with one another. One easy way to do that is that I can drag the alignment guide. Now when you drag the alignment guide, it may seem like you're not actually dragging it, but again, draw your attention to the little tick line in the ruler. So you see now that that tick line is showing me that it's between seven and eight, so seven and a half, 
and now I move the shapes up towards the top of the page and keep them in alignment with one another using that horizontal guide. I can do the same thing with a vertical guide. I can go over to the vertical ruler and drag a vertical guide onto the page and maybe use that to line up these shapes like so. So that's how you use the ruler. That's how you use the guides. The guides, once again, are selectable. So if you don't need a guide anymore on your page, go ahead and select it. And then all you have to do is hit the delete key to delete one of your guides. Now I know if you're using Visio, it may be tempting to skip over a lesson on cutting, copying, and pasting, but there are some nuances that if you understand will help you work more quickly. And if you don't, you'll just be fighting against them in your use of this application. So I'll move quickly in this lesson, but I'll also concentrate on the little nuances, some little differences that you may see between Visio and other Office applications. So I'm just going to scroll up in my diagram here. I've got a page. I've got three shapes on the page. You can quickly pause the tape and do the same thing. So now I'm going to select these three shapes that I've placed on this page, and I can duplicate them with Control D. Now notice that the duplication, it still lets me see the other shapes that I am duplicating, but that's one technique I have to just simply duplicate. I don't need to copy and paste. Now, if I do copy, which I'll do right now with Control C on the keyboard, and then I do a Control V, the traditional copy and paste, really the same thing happens. And that is if the shapes that you've selected or the shape that you've selected is visible on the Visio diagram, you'll see a little offset so you can see both what you have originally copied and what you have pasted. Now, I'll undo that as well. And now this should be still copied to my clipboard, these three copied shapes. And I will scroll down in my diagram just a little bit. And now notice that the shapes are not visible anymore. Now I'm going to do Control V to do the paste and notice what happens. Now it's not an offset at all, and I'll verify that by scrolling up, but rather Visio will place these shapes for me right in the middle of the screen. Now I'll show you a little variation on that when I take something that's on one page and move it to another page or duplicate it on another page. So now I'm just going to click on the add page or the insert page button to get to a new page in my diagram. And once again, if I now do control V, it will paste those shapes in relation to where they were. So the copied shapes were here. And when I paste, as long as I see something like that, it should paste them relative to their original location in the diagram. Now, if you want to be more precise about where that paste operation will occur, then what you can do instead is that you can right click on the page that you're doing the paste and click on paste. Now notice what happens. The three shapes that I've copied are pasted and the center point is that middle shape in the selection of shapes that I pasted. Here's something else that's interesting that's going on is that because that is the behavior of the copy and paste operation, I'm going to go up to the design tab of the ribbon and note that this thing auto size, page auto size is on, it's toggled on. So automatically resize the page as you draw. So as you are copying and duplicating shapes in your Visio diagrams and deciding that your copied shapes need to go on different pages, this can happen. Now, is this what you want to happen? Maybe, maybe not. What I'll do right now is that I will undo my last paste operation, go back up to page setup and turn off auto size, and now do that same right click and paste. And now you can see that the shapes are on the page, but this one shape, this triangle, is now on the canvas. So if I printed this page, the triangle wouldn't show. In my previous paste operation, if I printed this page three, it would actually create two sheets of paper. The last thing I want to point out before we go is the use of the control key on your keyboard. If I have a selection of shapes, in fact, I'm going to change my mind. I'm just going to select two shapes here and I want to quickly duplicate them. I can hold down the control key on the keyboard and now if I drag, it should make a duplicate of the shape or shapes that I have selected. So cut, copy, paste, and duplicate. Easy stuff, but 
With Visio, there's more than meets the eye. In this essential skill, we are going to resize and reorient shapes. Seems pretty intuitive, but again, there's a little more than meets the eye. So to start this out, I'm going to make sure that I am in my basic shapes stencil. I'm going to grab the rectangle master and drag it onto my page here. So now that I've got a rectangle in my drawing, I want to take note of these things. These are the resize handles. And eventually you get a screen tip that says resize the shape. Well, some of the resize handles are proportional and some are not. The ones that are in the center of the shape are the ones that I can drag to resize the shape and resize the height and the width. So there's the height and previously I did the width. Now, if I drag these ones on the corners, it is a proportional resize of the shape. And so that same thing will be true of most of the shapes that you work with. Now, certainly that's true of an ellipse. You can squish the ellipse if you want to or elongate it this way if you want to. I will delete the ellipse so that I can use a square and point out this. After deleting the rectangle, let's bring the square to the center and then try dragging these resize handles again. As you can see, it wouldn't be a square if I could change the proportions. Same thing with the circle. So do keep that in mind as you're working with some of the shapes that sometimes their proportions will be locked. Now, after deleting that square, I'll show you another thing that you may run across. Let's drag a cross onto the canvas here, onto my page. Same thing with the cube. In both of these instances, you can see not only the resize handles that are on the sides and the proportional resize handles, but you see this thing as well. And that is the box depth. In this case, if I click it on the cross, then the screen tip will tell me that it will adjust the thickness. These things are control handles. And so certain shapes will have control handles, which you can use to do things like, in the case of the box, you can adjust the depth of the box by dragging up or dragging down. So that's how to resize the shapes just using the mouse. In terms of reorientation of the shapes, you should see on most shapes, you should see this little thing, this little rotational handle, which can be clicked and dragged to rotate the shape. Now, if you click and drag and you keep the mouse close to the shape, then the shape should rotate in 15 degree increments. If you want to be more precise than that, what you can do is you can click and drag the mouse away from the shape, and now you are making one degree or even fractional degrees in your rotation. If you want to keep an eye on the status bar, it'll also tell you the angle that you are rotating. Not only that, it'll show you the height and width as well in the status bar. So there's 15 degree increments, and there we're being much more precise with our rotation. Now, if you want an even greater degree of precision, you can do this. I've got the View tab displayed, which you may have noticed from earlier on in this lesson. But in the task panes, I can adjust the size and position manually. I can do it by typing in actual data. So here I can type in the width. So I can go you know, maybe three, and that will be a three inch width of the shape. Same thing with the height. Let me do one inch height. And then the angle and the pin position, I can also adjust manually either by tabbing through the fields or by clicking and in this case, choosing a drop down. But most of these fields, you just click and type in the value that you want to use for that particular adjustment. Notice at the very top, you have X and Y positions. And in this case, with the pin position center center, if I take this shape and I want to put it in the X position of, let's say, 4, and the Y position of 6, then I move the center of that shape to the X position of 4, which is right here, and the Y position of 6 inches, which is right here. So using any or all of these techniques, you should be able to get your shapes exactly where you want them in your Visio diagram.